In this lesson, we will discuss several new smart improvement features available in Viri Next for Rhino that can greatly improve your workflow. These include the new auto exposure and auto white balance settings and the new adaptive dome light. Together, they will reduce your scene setup time and speed up your render results, freeing you up to spend more time working on the artistic aspects of your designs while letting V-Ray handle the rest. Let's take a closer look here in our scene by first opening up the Asset Editor. Currently, the scene is lit by the Sky System, which you'll see if we head to the Settings tab, drop down the Environment Settings, and click on the Background Texture Swatch. Back in the Settings, for this scene we're going to use the V-Ray Denoiser, which you can toggle on from here, and the Material Override down below with a gray override color which we have already applied. This way, we can focus on the lighting in the scene specifically without any distractions from materials. All right, let's begin by creating a dome light and placing it in our scene. But instead of loading in an HDRI, I'm going to copy the V-Ray sky texture from the environment slot and paste it as an instance in the texture slot of the dome light. Don't forget to disable the environment background as well so that the lighting comes only from the dome. Now, let's also turn off the portal lights and then start a render of the scene. By copying the environment sky into the dome light color, the render speed will be significantly increased thanks to the new adaptive algorithm built into the dome light in V-Ray Next. This checkbox, enabled by default, uses the light cache phase to selectively sample only the important areas of the dome light. As a result, it renders up to seven times faster compared to the non-adaptive mode. In addition, it also removes the need for setting up portal lights to light interior spaces since it automatically figures out which portions of the environment to sample and which ones to ignore. Now, the first thing you'll likely notice is that the render looks underexposed with a strong bluish tint. This is because we haven't set up any camera parameters yet. If we head to the camera parameters in the settings tab, we can adjust the exposure manually, but this is often a time-consuming process of trial and error. In V-Ray Next, we've introduced a new way to achieve a desirable exposure and white balance, simply by clicking the Auto button. Let's start with turning on the Auto Exposure feature and do a render of the scene. As you can see, the image already looks a lot better now in terms of lighting and contrast. It also has proper exposure and all the interior details are clearly visible. But that's not all. We also have the ability to additionally compensate or tweak the Auto Exposure result further using the new compensation parameter. Setting this to a value of one makes the result twice as bright. Let's draw a render region and do a render to demonstrate. Respectively, if we draw another render region and set the compensation to negative one, you'll see that the result will be twice as dark. Note that the compensation option is enabled only when the exposure is set to auto. Okay, let's return the compensation to zero. Now, the only thing left to correct here is the overall bluish tint of the image. Once again, we can easily fix this by enabling the Auto button across from the White Balance feature and then rendering the scene again. Keep in mind that in order to benefit from the Auto Exposure and Auto White Balance features, you need to be rendering in Production Mode rather than Interactive Mode. The Light Cache Secondary GI solution also needs to be selected as the light cache phase is used to calculate the exposure and white balance. Okay, everything looks as expected now. The color of our override material looks gray, and the additional lights in the scene maintain their intended color and contributions. With the new auto exposure and auto white balance features and just a few clicks, we now have much better lighting, colors, and contrast in our scene in a fraction of the time it would have taken to set this up manually. Now that we have the proper exposure and color balance, we can focus on trying out some different lighting scenarios to see what makes our scene stand out without needing to adjust any camera parameters to get a decent looking result. To demonstrate, let's first disable the rectangular fill light and then replace the sky texture of the dome light by right clicking on the texture swatch to clear it. Then, let's load in a bitmap and choose the HDRI01 image provided in the asset folder of this lesson. I'm also going to adjust the texture placement's horizontal rotation to 220 degrees, as I previously found that it catches the shadows nicely for our scene. Of course, you can feel free to experiment with this as well to find something that suits your taste. Now let's do another render of the scene, 
and see how the HDRI changes the look and feel. I think that looks pretty good. The scene has a much more neutral white tone thanks to the cloudy sky and the HDRI image, but it still maintains a nice soft contrast, which you can tweak further using the compensation slider in the camera settings if you'd like. You can also test out some different looks by simply changing the rotation parameter of the dome light and rendering out different tests to see how it impacts the image. I'm going to try out 300, as I've found it also gives a nice result here. Lastly, let's turn off the material override so we can see all of our materials in the scene and then render out a final image. All right, now you've seen how Enviri Next for Rhino, the new adaptive dome light and automatic camera settings can speed up your workflow and your renders while offering you creative flexibility for trying out different lighting scenarios.